Discipline means to do what we are supposed to do when we are supposed to do it. And that is something that many of us don't have. It's a very difficult quality. For example, it takes discipline to pray five times every day, doesn't it? And make us, O oh Allah, make us Imams, make us leaders, not in crime, but leaders of Al Muttaqeen, leaders of Al Muttaqeen. <laughs> Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillahi Adafa Mahamidahu Jamiu Kalkihi Kama Yuhibbuhu Wayarudah Subhanallahi Wabi Hamdihi Adada Kalkihi Waridona Sihi Wazina to Arshihi Wamida de Kalimate Subhanallah wa bihamdihi Subhanallah al-Azim Allahumma salli ala Muhammad An-Nabi al-Ummi wa ala alihi wa sallim taslima Mawlaya salli wa sallim daiman abadan Ala habibika khayri al-khalqi kullihimi Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد سبحانك لا إلم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي ربنا يسر ولا تعسر وتم بالخير وبك نستعين يا فتاح اللهم اجعلنا دعاة إليك وإلى رسولك اللهم فقهنا في الدين وعلمنا القرآن الحكيم ربنا زدنا علما اللهم اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأعوذ بك من وساوس الصدر وشتات الأمر وفتنة القبر أما بعد فقال الله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن المجيد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن في قلق السماوات والأرض واقتلاف الليل والنهار لآيات لأولي الألباب الذين يذكرون الله قياما وقعودا وعلى جنوبهم ويتفكرون في خلق السماوات والأرض ربنا ما قلقت هذا باطلا سبحانك فقنا ذاب النار حزرين كرام عن رب الأسمبلي yesterday we were speaking about the zikr of Allah we are speaking about the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we also mentioned that the time of Asr and the time of Fajr are two precious times. And the Rasul alayhi salam mentioned that Allah says, Remember me for a short time after Asr, Salat, and after what? Fajr, Salat. And Allah says, I will be enough for you. I will suffice. I will suffice for you for the intervening period I will be sufficient and dhikr means the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ayah that I quoted Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us he says inna fi qalqis samawati wal ard 
that indeed in the creation of the heavens and the earth inna fi khalqi samawati wal ard indeed in the khalq in the creation of the heavens and the earth wa ikhtilafi al layli wan nahar and in the going and coming of the day and the night the rotation the alternation of the day and the night that the day goes and the night comes the day comes and the night goes allah says in these things la ayatil li ulil albab in these things are signs signs for people who have understanding people who have intelligence this part here refers to tafakkur it refers to tasawwur or tafakkur which the people of zikr they call it muraqaba meditation or contemplation remember as youngsters as human beings we have goals we have ambitions we have aims in life but the greatest aim the greatest goal the greatest ambition is to find allah to recognize allah to know allah to love allah to become a friend of allah and allah becomes our friend to have love on a two way street you know sometimes you love somebody and you boast in oh i love that person i love that person so much and the person doesn't love you but you boast in you love that person so much but love on a two way street you love and the other party loves you in return that is that is commendable love good love so that should that is the highest goal ma'rifat of allah to recognize allah to get to know allah to love allah and that allah loves us also and one of the ways towards this which is also part of zikr is known as tafakkur contemplation thinking pondering meditating meditation known as muraqaba and this this is a very big way and a big step in journeying towards allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so allah says inna fi khalqi samawati wal ard indeed in the khalq in the creation of the heavens and the earth that when we look at the heavens and we look at the skies wow we see the skies seven skies so powerful so strong sab'an shidada the skies allah says he made it as bina'a as a roof as a canopy and they do not fall upon us and there are no columns and no pillars holding up the skies when we look at the skies and we see the sun we see the moon we see the stars and there are so many galaxies in space in the skies we have the milky way it will take you 100,000 years 100,000 years traveling at the speed of light and light travels at 300,000 kilometers per second so traveling with the speed of light which is 300,000 kilometers per second to get from one end of the milky way to the end, other end of the milky way would take a person 100,000 years and all of that is in the skies in the heavens then the andromeda galaxy then all these planets and all these stars jupiter saturn mars venus the sun the moon so in the creation of the heavens and in the creation of the earth we look at the earth and we see that allah has made the earth as a farsh for us allah has made the earth as a bed as a couch and we can walk upon the earth we can sleep upon the earth allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made the earth not very hard that we can drill into it no has he made it too soft that we can stand on it but he has made it in between so that we can walk we can sleep we can plant our crops we can build our houses on it and then when when we look at the earth 
and we look around and we see the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We see the khalq of Allah. We see the trees. We see the birds. We see the bees. We see the vegetation, the flowers. We see animals. We see children. We see people. We see movement. Movement in the world. Movement in the universe. Some baby is crying somewhere. Somebody is dying somewhere. The mountains we see, we see the seas, the oceans, the wind blows, the flowers. Allah says in all of these things, when you look at them, you think, you ponder, you meditate, all of these things are signs for people who have understanding. That when you see these things, you get to know the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You get to know the power of Allah. The beautiful roses and the flowers. You would never see a donkey going by a rose and smelling the rose and calling the other donkey and say, come, look how beautiful this rose is. These are things for man to appreciate. You would not see a buffalo smelling flowers or looking at the sunset. But the sunrise, the sunset, in the creation of the heavens and the earth, in the creation of the heavens and the earth, and in the rotation, the alternation of the day and the night, this day is about to depart, and the night will come, and then the night will depart, and the day will come, day and night, day and night. Allah says in all of these things, La ayatil li ulil albab are signs for people who have understanding, people who have intelligence. They are signs upon the oneness of Allah, signs upon the tawheed and the wahdaniyat, the oneness, the qudrat, and the power of Allah. One of our mashayikh, Sheikh Miran Sahib, Rahmatullah alayhi, Rahimahullah, wa nawar Allahu marqalahu, used to tell us. That if you want to know the commentary, the commentary on Allah, if you want to know the tafsir of Allah, then look around you and you will see and understand who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. You look at the seen to get to the unseen. Allah is unseen. Our eyes cannot perceive Allah. The only time we will be able to see Allah is on the day of Qiyamah, inshallah, when we are believers and when Allah takes us with Iman. Allahumma ahina muslimin wa amitna muslimin. Wa Allah cause us to live as Muslims and to die as Muslims. On the day of Qiyamah, the believers will be able to see Allah. In Jannah, the believers will have ru'yatullah, the sight and the vision of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But in this world, we cannot see Allah. Even Musa, such a great prophet and rasul as Musa, ala nabina wa alayhi salatu wasalam, could not see Allah. He could not see Allah. We can't see Allah with these eyes in this dunya, in this world here. But you know what? We are, we are aware of his 99 names. Ar-Rahman, the Beneficent. Ar-Rahim, the Merciful. Al-Ghafoor, the Most Forgiven. Al-Wadud, the Loving One. Ar-Razak, the One who provides food and sustenance. True, these attributes of Allah, we get to know Him. We get to recognize Him. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, ponder and meditate over the attributes of Allah over his names, but do not ponder and meditate over his thought, his being. You can't comprehend that. So if you want to know who Allah is, we look at his names, 99 names. Through his attributes, we get to know Allah. We look around and we see things, we get to know who Allah is. That Allah is the one that is causing the rain to fall. And the land that was brown, the land that was dry and dead, parched and brown. The rains came with life-given properties. The waters came from above with life-given properties. 
and it gave life to the dead earth and then the greenery starts to appear. This is what Allah is doing. Sometimes we see clouds and the clouds just pass us by and they don't drop any water for us and they go somewhere. It's like a watering truck. It's like a truck carrying water. You see that the, the water truck coming, but the water is not for us. And it passes by and goes to somewhere else. Allah is doing this. Allah is in control. The earth shakes. Zilzal. The earth shakes. Allah is in control. Tsunamis. Allah is in control. Floods. Hurricanes. Storms. Allah is in control. The superpower. Allah, the supreme being, Allahu Akbar, the greatest of all beings is in control. This is Allah. To ponder upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Sheikh Miran Sahib used to say, look around you and you will see the tafsir of Allah. So therefore, remembering Allah, remembrance of Allah, a, a, a big part of that is in contemplation, meditation, muraqaba. That we see things and we see the power of Allah. That is why Abu Bakr, a Siddiq, the companion of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say, Ma ra'aytu shay'an qattu illa ra'aytu allaha ma'ahu. Abu Bakr used to say, I never saw anything at all except that I saw Allah with it. I never saw anything except that I saw Allah with it. So if in other words, if he sees a mountain, he sees Allah's power and Qudrat behind that mountain. That that mountain is there, it is, it is with Allah's power that that mountain is standing. Ma ra'aytu shay'an qattu illa ra'aytu Allah ma'ahu. I never saw anything except that I saw Allah with it. If we see a waterfall, the waterfall is beautiful. We should see Allah with it. In other words, Allah's power is behind that. This is called, this is called Wahdatu Shuhud. Wahdatu Shuhud and Wahdatu Wujud. Wahdatu Shuhud means that whenever we witness and we see things around us, we see these things and we see Allah's power with it. So we do not become amazed by the things themselves and these things fascinate us fascinate us to such a great extent that we get lost over the dunya and the worldly things. No, but we see something immediately, there's oneness of witnessing. We see it and we see the power of Allah existing behind that. Wahdatul wujud, oneness of presence. That only Allah's presence is essential. The presence of anything else besides Allah is only mumkin and possible. Only Allah's wujud is wajib and essential and compulsory. The existence of anything else besides Allah, masi wallah, is just mumkin. So whatever is existing, it's just a possible existence. And it is existing only because Allah wants it to exist. And he is the only one and the only being that is existing. And everything else is existing through his idhan and through his permission. Wahdatul wujud and wahdatul shuhud. So Allah says, Inna fi qalqis samawati wal ard. So sometimes it is very important that we take time and we watch the sunrise. See the sunrise. Look at the sunset. You look at the beautiful flowers. Look at the mountains, the trees. Because when you see these things, the, these things which are nature, they connect you with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you see the tafsir, you see what Allah is doing, what is happening. This is meditation. So Allah says in these things are signs for people who have understanding. La ayatil li ulil albab. And then Allah explains who are the ulul albab. Who are the people of understanding? Who are the intelligent people? Allah explains. Alladina yatafakkaruna fi qalqis samawati wal ard. They are those people who contemplate upon the creation of the heavens and the earth. They contemplate a lot. And sometimes they are outdoors and they walk and they take walks in the forest. Or they are outdoors and they contemplate. They see 
the creation of Allah, they see the Khalq of Allah and they remember the Khalq. They see the creation and they remember the Creator. So the intelligent ones are those يَتَفَكَّرُونَ فِي قَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ who ponder, meditate and contemplate over the creation of the heavens and the earth. And after that pondering, meditating and contemplating, what do they say? رَبَّنَا O oh our Rabb مَا قَلَقْتَ هَذَا بَاطِلًا You have not created this in vain. This is not a useless creation or something created out of fun for the sake of joking and amusement. There is a big purpose behind that. There is indeed purpose behind this creation. That you have created this bilhaq with truth, with haq. Rabbana ma qalaqta hadha batila. O oh, our Rabb, you have not created this in vain, without a purpose, without haq. It, it just didn't come by itself also to. It came from you, with truth, with haq, with a purpose. And it just didn't happen with a big bang. A big bang, a big explosion and everything comes together. Sometimes we have to be careful what we study and what we hear from people who are the so-called intelligent people, but in reality they are really fools. Like the theory of Darwin, Darwin's theory, that man evolved from a monkey, from an ape, theory of evolution. Darwin was thinking like a monkey. He was thinking like an ape. All right? So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, that when they contemplate, they meditate, they realize, you know what? You know sometimes, like an atheist, an atheist is a person who doesn't believe in, in God. He doesn't believe in, an, in the supreme being. An atheist, he thinks things just happen by themselves. There is no planning and organization from above, from Allah. So how would you prove the existence of a God to such a person. One way you could do it is when he's talking and saying there is no God. One way is you can give him one slap on his face. Pata, one slap. And then you can say, you know what? That slap came by itself, you know. My hand just moved and it just slapped you on the face. All of that just happened by itself. And then he would say, you're mad? You're a madman. You slap me. You raise your hand. You slap me. Then you can tell him, well, if you can't believe that a slap couldn't come by itself, you think all these things can come by themselves, all these things that we see, the seas, and the seas do not overflow, and the rain is here, and the rain comes, and the plants are growing. So all these things, we see smoke. And when we see smoke, we know there is fire. Smoke gives indication upon fire. So these things that we see, when we see a chair, a chair gives indication upon a carpenter, somebody made that. We see a door, a door gives indication upon a carpenter, somebody made that. Even the slap that came on your face, it had to come because of somebody's doing. So therefore, when these simple things cannot come by themselves, you expect the whole universe to come by itself. So Allah says, these are the people who say, Rabbana, ma qalaqta hadha batila, O oh, our Rabb. You have not created this in vain. Subhanaka, glory be to you. You are free, you are pure, you are tahir, you are pak from all faults and all blemishes. You are one, you are perfect. There is no imperfection in you. Subhanaka, faqina azabanar. So therefore, oh, our Rabb, we believe. So please save us from the azab and the punishment of the hellfire. Save us from that, please, O oh Allah. So therefore, in the remembrance of Allah, one big way and one big step is through tafakkur, through contemplation, through muraqaba. You can reach Allah very quickly through that. Through tafakkur, contemplation, meditation. It brings you, it's, it's awareness awakens inside of you. And to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also. So when we, in other words, some, it is a sunnah. You're going down a hill. When you're going down a hill, you say, Subhanallah, you glorify Allah, Subhanallah. You are going up a hill, say, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, you are going up a hill. You see something nice and beautiful, you say, Alhamdulillah, Masha Allah. 
Somebody gives you something, you say, Jazakallah. Before you go to the toilet, you say the dua before going in the toilet to be protected from the foul male and female jinns inside the toilet. You come out of the toilet, you remember Allah and you thank Him for relieving you of that harmful stuff that was inside of you. Before you go to eat, Bismillah, Bismillah wa ala barakatil. While you are eating, you thank Allah for the food. Alhamdulillah, this tasting really good. After you have finished eating, you make the dua. Alhamdulillah, you remember Allah. Before going to sleep, you remember Allah. Allahumma bismika mutu wa ahya. When waking up in the morning, you remember Allah. Alhamdulillah, illadhi ahyana ba'dama amatna wa ilayhi nushur. You are going to ride your bicycle. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, and say the dua for a vehicle, whether it is a bicycle or a horse or a car or a truck or a bus. You're going to the sea, you're crossing the waters, you're going to the ocean, you remember Allah, the dua of Noah, Nuh, Bismillahi majriha wa mursayna rabbi la ghafuru rahim. And so often, you just say Allah, Allah. So the masnoon duas are very important for zikr, that throughout our practices in our daily living, the masnoon duas are very, very important because these things help us remember Allah. And then we put aside some time to do the tilawat and recitation of the Holy Quran. We recite Quran daily because Quran is full of power. Quran is full of energy, latent energy, which is within the Quranic verses. And when you read that, then the power comes out. And that is Allah's words. You know, if a person, if a boy is in love with a girl, and the girl that is his fiance, they are, they are going to get married. Father has agreed. Parents from both sides have agreed and they are going to get married. And he has seen the girl because it is sunnah to also see. It's to see the girl and to see the face. That is also a sunnah to look and to watch whom you are going to get married to. So all of that has done, is done. And perhaps... You know, then marriage takes place. Marriage takes place. And after marriage now, the man has to go out for Fisa Bilillah. He goes out in the path of Allah for some time. And he is newly wed. So his wife writes him a letter. His beloved writes him a letter. And he gets that letter. So far away he is from home. He will read this letter with love, isn't it? Every word take his time. And she might even put some perfume in it so you will smell it, smell it like perfume. So to greater than that, Allah has sent his letter for us. This is the book of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we should read it because Allah should be our beloved. Because if you love Allah and Allah loves you, that love is enough. That love will never ever depart Sometimes people love us and sometimes people become annoyed with us. But if we gain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then that pleasure will stay, inshallah, if we do the right things in this life, go into the grave in the next life. So the book of Allah, we should spend some time to read it and read it with love. And we should put some time aside, as I mentioned to you, to do the tasbihat, that you sit down in a corner somewhere and... You know, this is very important. A Muslim's pocket should not be empty of this. This is called, you know what they call this? They call this a mudhakira. They call this a mudhakira. In other words, it's an instrument which reminds you of Allah. The moment you put this in your hand, is a different feeling comes over you. Nowadays, people, there are some so-called people with some so-called knowledge, but these are really quacks. And they call this, they say it's a bidah. They say bidat, 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 bidat. That is incorrect. These are quacks. False ripe alims who have read a few books. These are quacks. Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala who had a big bag of date stones. And before going to sleep, he would make zikr. In other words, take out a stone, subhanallah. Subhanallah, subhanallah, Allahu Akbar, whatever, until the whole bag would become empty. 
So instead of going around with a bag of date stones in my back, on, in this 2011, we are living in the year 2011. So instead of walking around with a big bag of date stones, I can get something to count. So the date stones in the bag, they are, they are, they are unstringed. They are not stringed, but they are loose. But if he used it for counting until he would empty the whole bag, he would count Allahu Akbar until the bag is finished. So therefore, if these same date stones are stringed or beaded together, no problem in that. Then Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu had a string with 1,000 knots in it. Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu from Ashabu Sufa who, have narrated, who has narrated so many hadiths, he had a string with 1,000 knots in it. And he would not go to sleep on, in the night until he had completed that thousand knots in the string. So these are things for counting. For counting to get, in other words, you want to do a certain amount. You want to do a certain amount. You want to at least recite subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. You want to recite that at least a hundred times in the morning and a hundred times in the evening. You want to recite at least some darud, a hundred darud in the morning, a hundred darud in the evening. A hundred is tikfar in the morning, a hundred is tikfar in the evening. It is something which is used by all the great mashayikh and all the great awliya Allah. Alhamdulillah, if you go for hajj and you go to Saudi, you go to Mecca and you go to Medina, the practice is still there. You didn't see the driver of the van with his tasbih? The practice is still there, all in the dukans, all in the shops. The Arabs still have that. The Arabs have kept two customs. You will see all of them with a miswak and tasbih. In Saudi Arabia, in Makkah and Medina, you will see that these two practices are still there. So this is important for a Muslim to keep in his pocket a miswak and a tasbih. This is called the mudhakira. The mudhakira, which is which means that which reminds you. Because the moment you put this in your hand, you start to say, Subhanallah, 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 Subhanallah. So then you don't have to keep on talking, 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 talking. Sometimes you remain silent. You're in a taxi, you're in a car, you're traveling, you're coming from home. So instead of only talking, 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 you just sit down and while you're traveling, Subhanallah, Walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wa Allahu Akbar, Allah, you do your zikr, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. And it's good to put aside two times, sometime in the morning, sometimes in the evening, about 15 minutes, where you sit down, away from everybody, and you sit down and you do the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? So, the time is about up now, and um, the zikr of Allah is very, very important. And... If you want, I can leave you with a special zikr if you want that. It's a secret zikr, but do you want it? It's not the normal zikr. You want that zikr? Okay. Inshallah, for about two to three minutes, we will close our eyes. And this is a very deep zikr. It's a special zikr. You wouldn't find it anywhere out there. It has come down through the great mashayikh. One type of knowledge is knowledge which is passed on from teacher to student in the form of writing and books and ahadith and fiqh and tafsir. And one type of knowledge is what, that which comes from breast to breast, breast to breast like there, like Sheikh, 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 Sheikh Shihabuddin as suharwardi rahmatullah alayhi has mentioned the hadith that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that whatever he passed he once told Hazrat Ali karramallahu wajah he once told him about a certain zikr and the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told Hazrat Ali to close his eyes and then the Rasul alayhi salam did this zikr and then the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked Hazrat Ali to close his eyes and you do the zikr now. And then he did it. And then Hazrat Ali radiallahu anhu said he passed on that zikr to his student Hassan al-Basri. And Hassan al-Basri passed it on and passed it on until it came. There is also 
in the riwayats that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam had mentioned that he transferred certain things from his chest into that of Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu. So the, the gist of it is, is there's, there's something within the breast that is transferred from chest to chest, from breast to breast, breast to breast. And there are some things that, can, that are conveyed by ears in the form of writings and books and some things are transferred. So both have come down to us from the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam. The knowledge has come down to us from him, passing on, passing on, passing on. And the zikr and the tazkiyah, he passed on to Ali, Ali passed on to Hassan al-Basri, he passed on to Abu Bakr, Abu Bakr passed on and it came down to us. So there's transference of certain ilm and knowledge and secrets that are within the chest that are passed on. So this is also something which has been passed on to us through the generations from time to time. It is that you close your eyes and you do a muraqaba and you meditate. And you meditate as though, as though the arsh of Allah is before you. You know the arsh of Allah? The throne of Allah is before you. That arsh of Allah, that throne of Allah. You meditate as though you are seeing that arsh of Allah. As though, as though the arsh of Allah is before you. And then the nur, the rahmat and the mercy is falling from that arsh of Allah to the inhabitants of the earth, Allah's nur. And it's fallen like a waterfall. It's fallen like a waterfall coming down and pouring and flowing straight to your heart. So that... That is one type of meditation, muraqaba, as though you witness, as though you are seeing the arsh of Allah, as though you are seeing the arsh of Allah, and the nur from the arsh is falling. The bounties of Allah, the faiz of Allah, the rahmat of Allah is falling from that arsh, like a waterfall, like Niagara Falls, falling and then pouring and coming like a stream straight into your kalb. That is a very, very beneficial, powerful muraqaba. So just close your eyes for a couple of minutes and think about that and feel that nur from the arsh of Allah like a waterfall coming down and pouring straight into your hearts. For a couple of minutes, close your eyes and think about that, inshallah. La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. So this is a little taste of it. It's a little sample, a little taste. There are many, many other types of zikr. Deep, deep zikr and meditation muraqaba. But suffice with this for now. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Subhanakallama wa bihamdik. Ashadu wa la ilaha illa anta nastagfiruk wa natubu ilayk. حينما رددت يا رب العباد وانتشت روحي وصار الدمع يجري يا إلهي خذ بقلبي للرشاد فشراقتنا